Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I know I'm a bit late to the party on this one, but uh, I'm just wrapping up a film and we have been using Karma in Houdini 20 to render some clouds. So I felt it was a good time to kind of take you through the setup. So uh, to get started, we are going to open up a fresh Houdini scene. And for anyone interested, I am using Houdini 20.0.506. I'm going to go over to the stage context here. And now that we are on the USD stage, I'm going to hit tab and throw down a volume. And we're going to navigate to our cloud assets and grab a nice cloud VDB. If you follow me on my other socials, you'll probably know that I recently did a collaboration with Action Visual Effects, where I created a bunch of nice high quality cloud VDBs for them. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to go and check that out. So now that we have our volume on the USD stage, we need a camera. So I'm just going to hold down control and hit camera here. So we've got our camera. And then what we need is a dome light. And I'm just going to navigate over and grab. I really like this table mountain pure sky. So we have a light. And now we, if we go over to Karma XPU and just render it, you'll see that we have our volume, we've got our HDRI, some lighting there, but um, we now need a material. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click here and go back to Houdini GL. And I am going to throw down a material library. And just to start things off, I'm going to hit tab and type cloud. And you'll see that Karma comes with a Karma cloud material. So I'm going to throw that down. These things populate. I'm going to go back up. And uh, I'm just going to call this Karma cloud material reset. And now we need to assign this material to our geometry. So if you watch the short, I just quickly assigned it here. You can do it here. Uh, but what I'm going to do is actually throw down an assign material. So just quickly, the USD stage, the name of your objects are very important. You can see that right now it's just called the volume one. And when we assign the material, it's going to ask you for the name of the object that you want to assign the material to. So right now it's naming this object as volume one, and you can see it down here in our scene graph, uh, it's volume one. So I'm gonna just describe this and call it cloud one. And you can see that the name updated here. And now when we assign our material, if I type a uh, forward slash, you can see that we've got cloud one up there. Now I'm just gonna keep it as that. And for our material path, you'll see within the stage, just how we named our object uh, to cloud one, our material library also has a name. And the material name here is called materials. So if I throw down a forward slash and type materials, you can see that we can now jump inside our library and it has given us access to our uh, material that we just created. So I'm just going to do that. So we have our material. We just threw down this preset. Uh, we have assigned this preset to our cloud one. And if we are viewing everything up here and we go over and click render, you can see that nothing has really happened because uh, we aren't looking at the bottom of our chain. As soon as I hit render there, you can see boom. We now have a cloud, which is resolving really nicely, and it's looking really good. So you can get very good results very quickly by just simply using this material preset. Um, so in order to render everything out, now that we have our material and our object and some lighting with the camera, uh, I'm just gonna disable Karma XTU. And we're going to go, we're going to throw down a comma node. So if we throw down comma, it's going to give us comma render settings. And then this USD rock um, that we will use to, to render everything. So this is where we 
define where we want to render everything. And I'm going to be using the XPU engine because we love that GPU speed. Uh, and then I'm just going to remember to save our file. So I'm just going to save this quickly. There we go. And hit Control S. So now we can start to create our final render settings for when we export out this image. Now you'll notice that when I hit render, we are getting some nice volume scattering, but you'll see that our volume limit is set to zero. So that's unusual. So inside of our material library, if we go to this cloud preset, you can see it's using a comma pyro shader, and then it's got this material properties too. And if we select that, um, you'll see that our volume limit has been overridden and it's now 32. So what's happening there is that this is linked to the extinction fall off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this. So I'm going to say delete channels and I'm just going to set, I'm going to right click here and say, do nothing. Okay. So by default, this is how, uh, it, it should come out. Now, inside of our Karma render settings, we would set this to 32, and then we should get our nice cloud back. So our USD ROP, our final output node, is looking for the render render settings. And that is this object here, because it is being defined here. It's saying render settings primitive, and it is defined as being render render settings. Now, the output picture is going to our hip directory. I always say job. Um, I'm just going to pause this quickly and, uh, it's going to go to our render directory and then it's going to go to, uh, hip name. So I'm just going to add an extra, uh, folder in here called tutorial. Um, and then it will create, uh, it's going to create a file with the same name as our, uh, script over here. Uh, and then the name of uh, our node comma render settings and then and then just the now it's looking at camera one so because camera one is in our pipe it can uh, see it so if you have multiple cameras just make sure to actually define which camera you want to use so we do have the option for aovs for now i'm going to um, leave that because i will go over it later in this video and then say that we're happy with all of our render settings. I can just go down to the render wrap and I can, uh, I'm just going to say render specific frame range. And I'm just going to say one to two, because if you do that, and if you had rendered to disc, uh, it actually comes up with this little, uh, and then you can see how far along your render is. And it's rendered one image. And if we go over to, uh, uh, folder here, we can go to our tutorial and we can bring in our render and you'll see here is our cloud that we've rendered out. So we were successfully able to bring in our VDB, create a camera, throw some lighting down, uh, create a material, um, and then adjust our render settings in order to export out this frame that we see here. So that is the general workflow. Uh, this is a very quick kind of version. What I'm going to do now for those of you who are willing to stick around is I'm going to take you through the shader and show you exactly what it is doing.